What's up, everyone? Just wanted to, while I'm thinking about it, give a little tip. This is more a tip to myself on Amaranth. I will be putting out a full uh, tutorial, one of my premium videos and growing guide for Amaranth because it is definitely one of the trickier ones. Uh, but if you start doing mixes, you're going to need it just because it's one of the only red crops. So Bull's Blood Beet and uh, maybe a little Swiss Chard in there and Amaranth are the, the red crops that just put a little flare in it. Uh, the thing about Amaranth is it loves heat, summer crop like sunflower, and is very hydrophobic. So it really likes dry soil. And if something damps off just a little bit too much and you don't yank it quick enough, it will quickly take down whatever's around it. So I actually purposefully put it under, uh, these are under LEDs just because the sorrel that I grow out next to are under LEDs. They don't need that much light. Uh, I put it furthest away from all of my um, routinely watering crops. So the ones that just drink, sunflower, wheatgrass, pea. I put it as far away just so, because I will usually go around and feel weight of the trays, just do that. And that's how I tell if someone needs water. Or if there's no canopy, like with amaranth, you can see the soil color. You know, if I grow in Coco Loco and it will be a very light brown, if it is pretty dry and it'll be uh, black if it's wet. So um, I usually do it visually just cause that's easiest for me to tell. And I have a couple generations grown here. So this is the newer stuff, which I overwatered, unfortunately. Um, so I'll have to rip that out, but I don't use entire trays at once cause I only put the amaranth in my chef's mix or my, um, my color bomb mix, depends on who I'm selling it to, but it goes in with a shortened version of um, sunflower, red acre cabbage for purple, radish just for some weight. And uh, it doesn't really have a taste, so it just makes the mix come alive. So I have an older generation here, which gets darker and a little more purple, and then the bright red next to it. Um, but I just wanted to, to mention that part is it really doesn't like a lot of water unless you have it under a baking fluorescent, which some people do. Uh, and it sometimes does better that, but let it be dry. So if you start to see, it's better to have it be a little wilty and droopy than have it be over wet. Because if you have it wet, this will start happening and you'll lose a chunk. If you have it dry, they'll start falling over a little bit, but they perk back up fairly quickly because there's absolutely no weight. So um, reminder to myself, but don't put it anywhere near something that you're going to be heavily watering because you'll just get in the mode of either, oh, that tray is light and it'll always be light because there's no weight to amaranth. But uh, just a little tip for amaranth and be on the lookout for my full grow guide because it is definitely one of the more annoying ones, but it's definitely ones that you can put in some um, powerful mixes that chefs, restaurants, and even uh, people put garnish on there their plate at home love. I was surprised when I started offering my chef's mix, which is the same thing I described. Um, I have almost as many home delivery buyers and I price it the same as my, my chef's mix. And that's uh, four or $5 an ounce, which is not cheap. So, and a container of that is upwards of uh, 10 to 15 bucks, but it does last forever if you're using it as a garnish and it is beautiful and the flavor combinations are amazing. So, be on the lookout for that, and we'll chat soon.